So those two are interchangeable. Make sure you know that. Now, when we measure density, remember I said what density was. It's mass divided by volume. So here's a mass unit. There's a volume unit. Here's a mass, here's a mass unit. Here's a volume unit. Um, here's a mass, here's a volume. Notice that depending on the state of the matter, whether it's a solid, liquid, or a gas, we may use different units. You should recognize that, though, if you see this like this, some sort of mass in proportion to some sort of volume measurement, we're, th we're dealing with the density va value there. Okay? You would use liters, for example, for gases because gases occupy so much more space. Um, they, they, they spread out a lot more, so it's harder to, to limit them. You get a much fewer number of particles when you use small measurements. Now, what if you have something that is not easily measured? For example, a rock or a ring or a penny even, because pennies get worn over time, right? What if it's something you can't measure very well, but you need to calculate its density? Well, there was a guy named Archimedes, who was a, a Greek scientist, Greek philosopher, who was sitting, you ever heard the expression Eureka, right? That this is the a guy who's attributed to, me. I found it, right, Eureka. Um, he was sitting in the tub. A lot of great discoveries have happened in the bathtub, by the way. Um, I'm waiting for my epiphany. It hasn't happened yet. Um, but there's a guy named, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy on the atomic bomb. Salts. I don't know. Salts somebody. He, he, he gave that letter to Einstein. Einstein had to sign for FDR. Anyways, um, that guy was crazy. He, he was a, like a physicist and, and theoretical scientist who, who would take these like long, hot baths for like hours at a time and like, spend all morning in it, and that's how he would think. So that's that was how he did it, came up with all of his ideas. Ultimately, it led to the, all the research that went into the, the making of the atomic bomb for our country. But anyways, um, Archimedes um, was sitting in his bathtub, and what he realized was when he sat down, what happens to the water? Yeah, it displaces, right? Now, you might think, ooh, this guy's a genius. You know, he figured that out. But guess what? He was the first guy to write it down and to share it with other people and come up with an explanation how it can be used, so therefore he gets credit for it. That's the way the world works, right? Um, so we call it Archimedes' principle, this, this principle of displacement. And what he basically came up with, it wasn't just that. He just didn't say, ooh, look, the water went up. He, he came up with, uh, with some sort of mathematical relationship to say, you know what? The amount of water that went up was the same amount of volume that I occupy. So he's saying, I moved that water out of the way. However much volume comprises me is how much water I pushed out of the way. So if I, can if I have an irregularly shaped object, like, you know, like a rock that you can't really measure, and I drop it into water and I see how much water is displaced, I take the difference between where the water line was, where the water is now, if it's in milliliters, for example, and now I have a milliliter measurement for that object in terms of what volume it would occupy. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay, um, one thing to keep in mind. Solids have a much, much greater density than liquids. Okay? For any given volume of a solid, there's a lot more matter packed in. That makes sense, so that's, it's a higher density. Liquids have a much higher density even than gases. Gases are very, very, very low density. We'll talk about gases in a whole chapter later on. Um, now, except ice, and this is interesting. We'll get to this, uh, too, at, uh, later on. Uh, why, is, why is water so special? Why is water so important to life? Um, you, you, there may be things you haven't thought about, um, but water, I'll just, I'll just throw this out for now. Water is the only chemical on this planet that naturally exists in all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. No other chemical does that on this planet. Not only that, Water is the only chemical in which its solid phase is less dense than its light than its uh, liquid phase. Liquid water doesn't doesn't float on top of ice, right? Ice floats on top of liquid water. It's less dense. It's the only uh, you know the only compound where that happens. So those two things should be enough to think about. We'll discuss them further as as we go go along. Okay, so be able to manipulate these equations algebraically. So if I want to solve for density, I know I take the mass divided by the volume. What if I wanted to solve for the volume? I would take mass. You'd have to bring this up here, then bring density down here, mass divided by density. If I wanted to solve for mass, I would have density times volume. You've got to be able to do that. Okay, so <clears throat> read that for a second. This is how you, how you can bust somebody. Man gave a woman an engagement ring. 
tells her that it's made of platinum. Nothing that the, uh, noting that the, the ring felt a little light, because obviously a jewelry connoisseur, she, she would know this kind of thing. Um, the woman decides to perform a simple test to determine the ring's density before giving him an answer about marriage. Are they off on the wrong foot? Is he lying to her already? Um, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. She, she places the ring on a balance, because that's what you have at home. Everybody has a digital balance at home. Um, she places the ring on a balance and finds it has a mass of 5.84 grams. Okay. Now, you could probably use a kitchen scale, like do ounces, and you can go for ounces to grams if you wanted to do this. She then finds that the ring displaces 0.556 cubic centimeters of water, because you all have graduated cylinders at home, too. Um, I actually do. In, in my, it's right above my sink to the right with, with some other things. I've got a graduated cylinder and a beaker up there. I'm not sure. I think I brought it home for my daughter. We'll see. Um, all right, so you, could, you realize through, through unit conversion, there's a lot of ways you could come up with this. You, know, you, could, you could measure in different units depending on the, the stuff that you had, and you can convert either way. Uh, grams per cubic centimeter is, is where you'd probably want to get to. This is a common um, expression for solid objects, common units to use for density. So she would weigh it, and she would then take it and drop it in some water and see how much the water level changed in milliliters or um, Cubic centimeters. Remember, I said those two things are the same. So if you measure 0.556 milliliters, that's the same as 0.556 cubic centimeters. All right, so is the ring made of platinum? Well, fortunately for her, unfortunately for the guy, um, there is a table listed in about every chemistry textbook that exists on the planet that has a lot of the common densities for a lot of the most commonly considered metals. This is measured over and over through the generations and through the centuries, so this is common knowledge. Uh, you would look it up, and you could see that the, 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 experimental, the experimentally determined density of platinum um, by everybody is about 21.4 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, the question is, is it made of platinum? Let's see. There's what you know. That's how much it weighs. That's how much volume it occupies. You can use the relationship between the mass and the volume. That's what density is. So regardless of how big this platinum chunk is, it doesn't matter because the volume is going to change accordingly with the mass. So divide them. See what number you get and see if you get that uh, 21.4. Will you in this case? It looks like probably not, but let's see. Um, <coughs> density is um, going to be mass divided by volume. So you've got the mass, got the volume. Divide those two. What do you get? You get 10.5 grams per cubic centimeters. Definitely not. Okay. Now, if it was close... Maybe. You could, you, could, you could warrant further investigation, but that's half the value of what it should be. That, that's not close enough. Okay? Um, so, in that case, that ring cannot be, cannot be platinum. Now, <clears throat> using density as a conversion factor, um, because, remember, it is a, re a relationship between mass and volume, so since you have that numerator-denominator relationship and you can flip them, that still is an equivalency. That is a conversion factor that you can use. Let's, let's look at an example. Um, for example, if you look at the density of water, I told you that for every one milliliter of it you had, it would weigh one gram. So one gram per milliliter. One divided by one is one. Therefore, that's what that means, right? Therefore, one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water. That's a conversion factor. Lead. Lead has a density of 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter.